OK, guys, uh, are there questions? OK, so <clears throat> I want to make a remark regarding this construction first, and then we somehow try to see where we find ourselves and uh, where should we move next. So a uh, question regarding this construction is, uh, how does this bundle, Vikai, by the way, uh, let me make another remark, a uh, technical remark. So a splitting bundle for an Azumaya algebra is not unique. It's defined up to a twist with a line bundle. And uh, in fact, we have preferred choices of twists. Unfortunately, there are two of them. And they differ by O of rho. OK? So from now on, I'm going to ignore this difficulty as well. And somehow assume that I have uh, one bundle with all nice properties. Well, in fact, there are two bundles which kind of have complementary nice properties. But uh, the question is, how does uh, Vikai depend on chi. It does depend on chi because it's a vector bundle on a uh, neighborhood of Springer fiber. And how does it depend on p? It definitely depends on p because the rank is p to power d of g mod b. Okay? So it definitely depends on p. And on p. So here is the answer to this question. And the answer is due to Bezrukovnikov and Mirkovich. <coughs> and what they say is the following. So there is a G equivalent. And once I write G without a subscript, I mean G over complex numbers. So there is G equivalent uh, vector bundle curly T on T star of G mod B, which has the following properties. So first of all, the endomorphism algebra of T, and I will often write uh, A for this algebra, has finite homological dimension. <coughs> and uh, there are no higher x. So such uh, bundles are called tilting generators. And the nice properties that they have is that uh, if you take R gamma of t tends to something, it gives you an equivalence of db koch t star g mod b. and uh, derived category of modules over this A. Okay. Second is the ring of definition. So this T is defined over finite localization of Z. In particular, we can reduce it mod p for all sufficiently large primes p. And number three, so when we do so, and base change to f, and then restrict to the neighborhood b chi, oh, let's put one here, which 
So this bundle has the same indecomposable summons as V chi. Have same indecomposable summons. Okay. For all P large enough. Okay. So up to Marita equivalence, our bundle VK is independent on P, and actually it comes from a single bundle on T star G mod. <coughs> okay. All right, that was uh, remarks about derived localization. Are there questions? Yeah. So this answers this question. So bundles VKI, which a priori are the same for each chi, up to Marita equivalence come by restricting the same bundle on T star G mod B. Okay? This one. Okay? So this bundle is defined on T star G mod B. It can be restricted to a neighborhood of every spring of fiber. And then we have the same the bundle with the same and decomposable summons as this one. I mean, this question, I mean, I mean, it's not a well-defined question because this bundle is defined up to Marita equivalence. Uh, I have no idea. Okay, so let's try to understand where we are in the great, thing of, in the great scheme of things. So, what we see We see that the category that we want to study, like UK 0 F mod, or the category of modules over the fiber of this algebra over the corresponding important element, uh, it has to do with uh, coherent shifts on as a spring of fiber. Okay? And now we want multiplicity formulas for symbols in this category. Cardanglistic type multiplicity formulas have to do with a different category of shapes. And uh, they have to do with uh, constructible or maybe uh, better perverse shifts on flag varieties. In particular, we will need a fine flag variety. And Bezrukovnikov related this constructible derived category to coherent derived category of the Steinberg variety, which is a, a grown up version of this category here. So, what I want to do next, I want to explain his results, and the nice thing about his results, about the, at, le at least about the result, is that uh, in order to explain it, we need to spend only very little time talking about categories, 
because this relation already manifests itself on the level of usual Hecke algebras. Okay? So now, uh, until the, more or less maybe until the end of this lecture, we will talk about affine Hecke algebras. And in the very end, we'll talk about affine Hecke categories. So, as some people in this room know, uh, affine Hecke algebras have two different presentations. And first one is a Coxeter presentation. So let's talk about Coxeter presentation, which has been already mentioned. This presentation makes perfect sense for all Hecke algebras, but we will look at affine ones. So what is this? We have a basis, uh, T sub W, of the Hecke algebra, and multiplication is given like this, T sub S times T sub W <coughs> is going to be T S W if the length of S and W is L of S plus, well, let me write one plus L W. And then we have uh, T S W plus V minus 1, V to minus 1 minus V, I guess. No, I think it's the other way around. So V minus V inverse, TW, else. In the way how these uh, relations are obtained, you look at uh, like Borel by invariant functions on, the appropriate, on an appropriate group. And you consider them with respect to convolution. Okay? So this immediately suggests that uh, Hecke algebra is K0 of a suitable category of constructible shapes. So let me recall how this is done. Yeah. I mean, this is a crystal is uniform for all cases. Okay, but, but when you consider an affine Hecke algebra, you would like to use some, something, some shift, not just a reflection. Yes, sir. We will talk about this if we have time. Okay? So, uh, so let's talk about geometric realization of this presentation. So first of all, I need to look at the Langlands dual group. Oops. So Langlands dual. And so what is that? So roots of G check is the same as core roots of G. And the lattice of, say, characters of the corresponding maximal torus is the lattice of one parameter subgroups of the original torus T in G. So, for example, if G is SO2 and 1, 2 and plus 1, uh, then G check is going to be SP to N. Okay? So we take the Langlands dual and we form the uh, loop group.
So, uh, form the loop group of uh, Laurent uh, power series and uh, G check. Inside we have the usual power series. which subjects onto G-check. And then inside of G-check we have a barrel. And then you take the pre-image and you get the so-called Ivahori subgroup. So that's Ivahori. And you consider the quotient of uh, the loop group by the Evachori, that's the fine flux variety, which I will denote by FL. On which we still have an action of, well, we have an action of the whole loop group, in particular, we have the action of Evachori. That's a fine flux variety. Uh, when we say variety, of course, we mean that this variety is infinite dimensional, but it's a union of uh, usual finite dimensional varieties. And moreover, it has a nice cell decomposition, namely uh, the orbits of uh, the Ivahori are all affine spaces. And they are indexed by the affine well group. So, what can we do now? We can consider the equivalent derived category for the action of I check on FL. And that's the first manifestation of affine Hecke category. So that's a triangulated monoidal with respect to convolution. So convolution of shifts is just a shift theoretic version of convolutions of functions. Monoidal category known as a fine Hecke category. And then on this category, we have a T structure uh, known as perverse T structure. And inside, you can consider uh, the heart, which is category of perverse shapes. So the category of perverse shifts is precisely the category which is responsible for Kardan Lustig multiplicities. Okay? So that's a natural home for these multiplicities. And now what's uh, what's a geometric construction of um, uh, this Hecke algebra which works equally well for all coxeter types when there is a flag, right, of course? So the affine Hecke algebra that we consider is K0 of this monoidal category which is not a precise statement. In order to make this K0 uh, an algebra over 
Laurent polynomials, what we need to have, we need to have a grading here. So instead of taking this category, we need to take certain graded lift. But that's a technical thing, which I'm not going to discuss. Okay? So basically, what you need to remember is that affine Hecke algebra is K0 of the category of uh, these constructible shifts. Okay? Now, uh, this was one presentation of affine Hecke algebra. There is another one, which is specific for affine wild groups. Which I'm going to explain next. And it's known as Bernstein, present Bernstein presentation. And so here, this presentation is sort of based on the decomposition of uh, W sub A, super A, as W semi direct with the character letters of the torus. So um, the affine Hecke algebra is generated by the following elements. T sub i, where i uh, runs over finite simple roots. And also the lattice generators, x sub mu, where mu is in the weight lattice, subject to the following relations. Okay? So there are relations among the TIs, and those are usual hacker relations. So TIs satisfy relations for finite Hecke algebra. Uh, X sub mu satisfy relations for the group algebra of the character lattice. And finally, there is a cross relation between TIs and X mu. So let me write it down. It looks like this. So TI times X mu minus X SI mu TI is equal to, if I get things correctly, uh, v minus 1 minus v times the following fraction x mu minus x si mu divide by 1 minus x to minus x of minus alpha i minus the simple root. And note that this Laurent polynomial in the numerator is divisible by the Laurent polynomial in the denominator. But if v equals 1, why do you get 0? Why do you? You're not supposed to get 0. You just get the group out. Uh, it's a good point. No, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. If v is equal to 1, this is 0. Because it's a relation in the group algebra. You conjugate this element by TI. 
Okay? So that's the presentation. And this presentation also has a geometric interpretation now of different nature. Namely, so geometric realization of this presentation is like this. So we consider the so-called Steinberg variety. Uh, which I will call by ST. And so what it is, it's uh, t star of b times t star of b over g. And when I pass to categories, this will need to become a derived scheme, of course, like derived complete intersection. And on this variety, or derived scheme, or whatever, we have an action of the group G times one dimensional torus. And G acts naturally, and one dimensional torus acts by simultaneous dilation on the cotangent fibers in these two factors. So, what we can do, we can take the equivalent K0. So, we can take K0 of the category of equivalent coherent shifts on the Steinberg. And the fact, I'm not sure about precise uh, attribution, So fact is that the affine Hecke algebra is this K0. Where the algebra structure is again by convolution. Okay? So once you have a variety of this form, you can convolve or coherent shifts. And uh, this identification is quite natural. For example, uh, the uh, V on the left-hand side is the equivalent parameter for C times on the right-hand side. And then it's very easy to interpret the lattice generators. The lattice generators are just line bundles on the diagonal. Okay? So Hecke generators are more Involved. Okay. Hmm? So lattice generators are lying bundles on the diagonal. So inside of this variety, you have a diagonal copy of T star of B. Okay. Yeah, lying bundles are invertible. Yeah on diagonal, and that's why they are invertible. That's precisely why they are invertible. Convolving with such a line bundle is just uh, multiplying with this line bundle. All right, so what do we get? So uh, we get that this K0 is basically the same as this K0. And then you ask a very natural question, so does this isomorphism of K0s actually come from equivalence of categories? And Bezrukovnikov tells you yes. So categorification is the following result of Bezrukovnikov. <coughs> So 
So theorem uh, of Bezrukovnikov tells you that uh, the equivariant derived category on the flock variety is equivalent to the category of G equivalent coherent shifts on the Steinberg. Okay? And you have a graded analog of this. So this admits a graded lift. So that's an equivalence of triangulated monoidal categories. All right, questions? <coughs> No, this uh, equivalence is glued, more or less, I think glued is the right word, from uh, some previous equivalences. I mean, the geometry of these two spaces are, are not related. Do you have like correspondence? No, and on one side I deal with constructible shifts, and on the other side I, I deal with coherent shifts. Yes. So, I mean, there is no correspondence which will give you an equivalence like that. Hmm? Yes. It's uh, from uh, 2012 or 2014, the paper. It's 17, but it was a, the, the preprint was like several years earlier, right? <coughs> okay. So let's see uh, where we are now. So we established an equivalence between triangulated categories. But if you want to relate multiplicities, this is not enough. Because multiplicities, they know something about abelian categories, not about derived categories. What we need to understand is how this derived equivalence is compatible with natural T structures that I have on these two categories. So here I have a perverse T-structure. Here I have a T-structure which comes from the tilting generator. So this is a T-structure which is responsible for representation theory of Lie algebra in positive characteristic. I need to understand how these T-structures are related. And the main guess would be that just this equivalence intertwines these T-structures. This is not the case. In fact, it does something uh, much more interesting. It's a perverse equivalence. So, um, so uh, let me elaborate on this. So let's talk about perversity. <clears throat> so uh, I have uh, two structures. So we have perverse on the left hand side. And uh, on the right hand side, we consider the uh, bundle, which is uh, the restriction of T times T dual to Steinberg, 
And this is uh, this bundle gives you derived equivalence between db Koch uh, G Steinberg and uh, derived category of bimodules. So I have algebra A, which was endomorphisms of the tilting generator. And then uh, when I turn the, with this uh, vector bundle and apply R gamma, I land in the category of bimodules over A and A opposite where the actions of CG are identified. Okay? So, and this gives me a T structure on. on uh, D.B. Koch of the Steinberg and the heart uh, this category of bimodules. And now I ask myself, how is this equivalence compatible with these three structures? So it's going to be perverse. And in order to define a perverse equivalence, categories in question should come with filtrations. So this equivalence from the theorem is going to be perverse with respect to filtrations that I'm going to introduce now. So let's start with the constructible category. <clears throat> so in the constructible category, the T structure, the heart of the T structure is a category of perverse shifts. And the symbols are labeled by the orbits of I check. So irreducibles in this category of perverse shifts are in natural bijection with the orbits, so with elements of the affine well group. And now on the affine wild group, I have, uh, I can decompose it in two two sided cells. So this here is a union of two sided cells. And once I have this decomposition, I can define a filtration which will come from the pre order here. It's two sided cell pre order. So here, I have two-sided cell pre-order. And this gives me a filtration on my category where filtered pieces are indexed by two-sided cells. You, know, you take uh, an object here, look, you look at perverse cohomology, and you see in which pieces you have uh, 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 simple constituents of uh, 
the cohomology proofs. This gives you filtration. Now, let me explain the filtration on the coherent category. So now let's look at D.B. Koch, uh, G of Steinberg. So this filtration here is going to be indexed by nilpotent orbits. And the way how it's going to happen is this. So Steinberg naturally maps into the nilpotent cone. You just, uh, I mean, that's a forgetful map. You forget two flags. And this is a union of orbits. <clears throat> and on the orbits, I have a partial order by inclusion of closures. So I can define, so if I have O inside of N, I can define a subscheme ST uh, sub O, O bar, uh, which is just pre image of O bar. And this gives me a filtration. on the category. So the piece which corresponds to O will of less or equal than O will consist of all complexes whose cohomologies are supported on this preimage. Okay? Now we have two filtrations. One is indexed by two-sided cells. The other is indexed by nilpotent orbits. But in fact, these sets are in an actual bijection, which was discovered by Lustig. So result of Lustig So Lustig tells you that two-sided cells in the fine wild group are in one-to-one -one correspondence with important orbits in G. Okay? So in fact, I have filtrations indexed by the same set. And the posted structures are the same as well. And I can ask, how is this equivalence compatible with the filtrations that I consider? Uh, for, to answer these questions, it will be more convenient to uh, consider to, uh, how to say it? to consider a rougher filtration just by integers. So let me tell you what I mean. So let me consider the category db big O equals an i of g equivar of uh, g equivar and coherent shifts on the Steinberg. And that's going to consist of all objects M in db Koch G of Steinberg, whose cohomology are supported on the preimage of the union of all orbits 
uh, whose codimension in n is big O equals than 2i. Okay? So for 0, I get the whole category because I don't impose any support condition. And then I get smaller and smaller categories. So now I have filtration by integers, and I can do the same on the constructible side. I will also get filtration by integers. Uh, any questions? So we are going to finish very soon. I think it's quite complicated. Misha, Sasha, comments? Well, in type A, but in general. So you may know the result of finite while group, which tells you that two-sided cells in finite while group are in bijection with certain orbits. And definitely, this bijection is, is an upgrade of the previous one. Okay. Hmm? For classical, you mean? For which wild groups? Of which? What's an irregular wild group? <laughs> For finite wild, wild, I mean, you can make it explicit. I wouldn't say it's very explicit, but. Uh, okay, in any case, so we have two filtrations by the same label and set. And uh, here comes the result of Bezrukovnikov. <coughs> which says that the equivalence from the previous theorem Preserves the filtrations Okay, so it intertwines one filtration with the other Even the, in the original setting where it's uh, indexed by nilpotent orbits not by integers and moreover Induced equivalence of the graded pieces <coughs> So the i's graded piece on the constructible side and i's graded piece of the coherent side is t exact with a shift. is t exact after shift by i. Which is more or less a definition of a perverse equivalence. Okay, questions? No. I'll explain the implication. So construction is there, I mean, it roughly goes like this. So in these two categories, you have common pieces, like the cardan lustic category in the constructible side, and uh, what was that? Um, category of G equivariant shifts on T star G, T star G mod B on the uh, coherent side, and so on. So there are several common pieces. And then, kind of, Raman tells you 
Uh, so I forget about directions that once you kind of have equivalences between common pieces, they extend to equivalence between uh, ambient categories. Okay. So it's uh, it's uh, more or less something along these lines. So tomorrow I will explain how these uh, results apply to producing uh, multiplicity formulas in the distinguished case. Uh, more precisely, we will need to uh, produce a parabolic version of uh, the derived equivalents, and then we will examine the exactness of that uh, parabolic version using this uh, result about perverse equivalence. That's how, how, how the proof works. Well, I mean, it will be equivalence of suitable categories. So reduction to characteristic P is not really done on uh, in characteristic zero, there will be equivalence of categories, like an honest one. No, I only talk about distinguished case. So in distinguished case, there will be an honest category equivalence. And honest the exact quotient function. So maybe, okay, so this was supposed to, okay, so this workshop was supposed to do something with the fine algebra. So let me uh, tell you interpretation of this result uh, on the level of a fine algebra. And then we'll finish. So <clears throat> the category of perverse shifts is equivalent to the principal block of a fine category O at a negative level. That's a well-known result from the fine version of localization theorem. The category of bimodules, on the other hand, is a principal block of a fine category O on a positive level. And the equivalence in the theorem is more or less the ringel duality. Ringel duality between the two. Okay. All right, so that's it for today. Three thirty. Uh, to my Yuki is at uh, ten thirty. Yeah, turn 30 to 11, 30, and then 12 to 1 is Tamayuki. No, it's 3.30.